Hello, and it's time for Odd Things. And what could be more odd than the Odyssey 2 itself? <laughs> I got a bit of a weird angle going here. I have recently picked up Odyssey 2, as you can see. A uh, very interesting device. Uh, I do have more games for it, but this is the best condition one, so I thought it was best for the video. So let's crack this uh, monstrosity open. Oh yeah, I forgot there were some games in here too. But we'll get to those. So, the Odyssey 2. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, the Odyssey 1 is the first video game console. Or the first thing you could call a video game console that was ever released. And that obviously has quite a history with it. And it was really interesting to see this. Wow, limited, limited warranty and stuff. Um, such, let's see, Chicago. Man. Now, the original Odyssey was really different from pretty much any other console because um, it's kind of it's like those preloaded, uh, like that Atari Age thing where it just has preloaded games and that. The, uh, the Odyssey 1 just had preloaded games on it. And you usually, you used like accessories with it. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I think actually it did have like cartridges that helped assist a little. Uh, it's been a while since I've read about the Odyssey one. I think I think it did have like the main program in the system, but it used the cartridges to like edit it a little or something. Like they they worked it together, or not just simply played it. Very nice book that has a lot of different games listed in it. But the Odyssey 2 is more like traditional consoles where you would, oh, so much stuff here, where you would be able to actually load the games and they came on their own cartridges. And I have to say, they, they had some really slick cases here. Nice, simple box. It even has a little tab so you can just hang them, convenient for stores and collectors. Opens up nice. Cartridge right there, booklet on the side, information stuff. Looks nice, sleek. It's a real shame this is the only one that's like in really good condition out of the box. There's a lot of the other ones. But uh, since uh, oh, we have these loose ones, they have nice little grip parts on them. Uh, the insides actually have a little metal frame there, and then they just slip in. Very nice, simple. You can pull it out. And then, like the Atari in that, it uses a analog stick. What's really nice about the analog stick is it's really springy. Like, it doesn't feel, it doesn't have a clicky. It it has a really nice spring feel to it. It's it really makes me wonder if I could find someone who's opened one of these things up because it's actually got me a little curious. But it only has that and one action button on it. So, uh, I think, I don't remember if the Odyssey 2 came out before. I think, I think the Atari 2600 came out before the Odyssey 2. But I know the Odyssey 1, obviously, uh, did, uh, did come out before that. Uh, we got second analog stick here. That one's a little clicky, but that sounds probably more to do with it. Now, eh, I don't have a lot of familiarity with a lot of old console stuff. That has a really odd plug. Ooh. Get a nice look right there. Gotta slip these over. Look at this monstrosity. Ooh. There we go. Let me take a look at this bad boy. 
That's simple. One plug for the plug and all the wires are into the console itself. License and USA patent. That's its pen number. We got here. Got a little slip of paper on the bottom here. Inspection card. It's carefully inspected and tested. Deal sending reports. <laughs> but see here we got a power button here. It stays in. It doesn't display any lights in there, and then you got a lot of buttons and such. Now, of course, it would vary on what kind of game you're playing. That buttons would give you more options. I've never played any games for the RC2. It's not something you usually see somebody with. And again, like I said, you just plug in the game right. Bam. It's a very nice, sleek design. I really actually like that about the cartridges. They're very sleek. Big shame is because the middle frame on the bottom, you know, obviously if you don't take care of them well, they get a little rusty looking, which is a bit of a shame. It's really, it's really fascinating how such primitive technology actually... I really like the cartridges. They're very actually nice there. This this thing goes on eBay and that for about like eighty dollars now. So this is a pretty nice little collector item here to get here. The RC2 microprocessor. Very nice. But this is old stuff here. Very old. Way before my time. It's hard to think this thing survived so much time. But yeah. The connector wire. I need to check on how to, I don't even know what the hell that is. That isn't even like the uh, Toy 7, uh, was it, 7600 or whatever, the third console Toy did. One after the 5600 or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I always get the other two numbers. That's a very odd connector. I will have to look into that. I don't know if it's even possible to connect this thing to a modern TV. Uh, he claimed it worked, which, to be honest, I, I question really his honesty on that, but either way, it's a really nice collector's item alone, Matt. But it's definitely a very odd find. I haven't found something this bizarrely old in quite a long time. I really think this was a very nice pickup. Uh, the deal, he gave me five games with it, and he didn't even... <laughs> He didn't even realize it had two games in there, so I actually got two more games with it. But, um, this particular game's odd, because it's actually Go. You know, if you're familiar with uh, Japanese board games, or Chinese, or Asian in general, th this is Go. Like, that kind of surprised me a little, because, I mean, you know, that that's an Asian game, and this was an American console, so... In case anyone wanted to see the booklet, since it's not exactly something common. Important to always be sure that the power to your RC2 console is turned off before inserting the game cartridge. This protects the electrical components and extends the life of the unit. Ooh. Yeah, you purely used the joystick on here. Yeah, very simple. It's in color, though. Very minimal color, but it's in color. Yeah, I just thought it was weird. It's like, Go? Like, shit, most Americans didn't even know what the fuck Go is, even now that we have the internet and shit. And yet, here it is for the, the Odyssey 2. And apparently, assuming... Wow! That's a Radio Shack sticker on now. I don't know if that's the original stickle, but that does that does not look like a modern Wayo Shack stickle. That's for sure. That's very interesting. I I wonder if they, this actually came from a Wayo Shack. That's very odd. <laughs> and uh, I might get see if I can get some footage of something to maybe throw in with this particular video. But uh, I thought this would be something nice to show off on the 
oddities that I don't know if I'll ever get to actually play the console itself, but it's very nice find now. Very nice. I really would have to wonder what games use this touchpad here or that, or little buttons and that. I wonder if there's even a lot of games that use them. You know, it's so weird how, like, this and, um, the ColecoVision have all these fucking, like, foam buttons and shit. Like, the Coleco thing was all, like, a fucking phone control on that. Like, for these very, like, Stone Age-style games and that. It, it's crazy. And people say we have too much buttons on our controllers. Well, look at this. The fucking console itself has more buttons than any modern console right now. So, take that, moms and dads who complain. <laughs> take that. But, that's definitely nice. It's very simple. I would probably have to say the wood grain design of the uh, Atari was probably still much nicer. You can tell this is all plastic. They don't really go for a very stylized look. Neither did the original Odyssey, the Magna Box Odyssey. And you know, it's kind of weird. I wonder why they just dropped the whole Magnum Box thing. Because, I mean, the first one was called the Magnum Box Odyssey. And maybe they just thought it would be simple just calling it one thing instead of a longer title. Go ahead and put this back in and show off the box a little bit too. But it's definitely a nice collector's item. It usually goes for about $80 or more from what I see online. And I got this with a few other things for like $75. So uh, the other item I got, what I got actually a little more than what it usually goes for on the internet but since I got with this I pretty much kind of evened out on being whipped slash not whipped off <laughs> and I'm also going to show that item too now I got one had to get all this stuff in it does kind of suck that the power plug's the only one that plugs in a little bit because Everything else is hot wired into the console itself, so it makes everything have to always be so ever close. Always apart, always yawning. Yawning for more. And it's amazing this box, it's actually pretty thick too. And it even has visible stains and shit, and it still fucking survived to this day. It's crazy. It's a pretty colorful box. It's huge, obviously. It definitely stands out really nice. Ugh. I like a lot of the fucking color text they do on that. Ooh, and we got no sticker up here. Uh, I don't see anything about Wave Shack. It just has some model information on it. But yeah. That is the Odyssey 2. It's a very interesting device. I don't know if I'll ever really play the games, but hey, I'll definitely give it a nice uh, little home. And for some reason, you know, out of Cartridge's artwork, I really like that one. It's That one actually looks really nice. I, I like that one. It's a really shame it didn't have a case. Pickaxe Pete. I wonder what kind of game that is. 1982 copyright... I wonder if Magnum Box owned all the games that came out in its system. I know back with Atari, it was monopolizing that, and that's what caused the dog pies to be created because of one credit and shit. So everyone was like, well, fuck this, I'll just do my own company then and get my own little credit. But yeah, I'll probably be also briefly showing off uh, the games and that I got with this in my update video. It's a really nice device and that. It, for its time and that, and oh my goodness, you know, I haven't taken that one out. That one's really fucking clean. You know, I wonder if the other ones in the boxes are really nice. But yeah, I mean, these, these are some pretty nice sleek little cartridges and shit. They're very nice. I, I really like the weird grip idea. I just can't get over these really nice cardboard things. They kind of remind me of the 
ones that Sega Genesis kind of had for a few games, but instead they were like more, they slide into a sleeve and then they had a thing like that. I just really like the idea. And I really bet collectors love this little hanger tab thing that's on these. Probably hang them on the walls and shit. <laughs> it's a really nice little add to my collection. Like I said, I don't know if I'll ever be able to hook it up to a TV. Because I, I don't know the connector. It's something I definitely have to look into. But, uh... It is definitely a nice little collector's item. But my next item is something I actually do want to use and even play. So, I'd say there wasn't a whole lot in that. But I thought that kind of dissolved its own video. And I thought that'd give uh, all of these... Uh, Come back. Anyway, next time. Uh, next one will be a much shorter, uh, shorter little show off. But uh, I think some people might get a kick out of it in the Sega part of town. Anyway, until next time. Praise the sun.